All right, hey everyone, Waterbot here, and welcome to Airborne Kingdom. It's a new city builder-ish strategy game uh, that comes out, I guess, today as far as YouTube is concerned, but tomorrow for the nice people on Twitch. I'm going to very quickly peek at some of these things. I'm going to turn on subtitles, and that's pretty easy. All right, let's begin. I don't know too much about this game. It popped up on my radar a couple weeks ago, but I kind of... Didn't pay too much attention because I was busy with other things, but In it looks lovely. Age, a kingdom existed like no other. This kingdom did not anchor its power. This kingdom took to the skies. The airborne kingdom traveled to every kingdom on the ground, sharing knowledge, culture, and tradition. Its great council guided the lands through a golden age. Yet, long before even our elders can remember, the airborne kingdom vanished. The people sought to continue their harmony, but Self-interest began to overrule. The land's three regions slowly isolated. Trade, travel, connections all unwound. Kingdoms contracted, and small settlements nearby were nearly wiped away. Bygone times turn to legend. But in the tapestry, we found instructions. A blueprint to remake the technology of the ancients. A prophecy to restore the airborne kingdom. There was but one belief we had wrong that day though it proved vital. For such a finding was no chance at all. All of our painstaking efforts have succeeded. Our home flies, yet this is only the beginning. To truly rebuild the Ancients' vision, we need to find every kingdom upon the lands and befriend them as common allies. We also need inhabitants to form our great council in this new empire. We should start with the Kingdom of Rutalia, Rutula, sorry, not far from us, and the only kingdom we know. But first, we must build houses and find supplies. Oh, this is lovely. So... We have... Uh, rinky dink boat castle <laughs> all right build housing block hangar path okay okay so rinky dink boat castle is actually pretty big no tilt issues huh so i'm gonna have to worry about that this honestly almost kind of reminds me of flotsam but is more of a town builder those are cute little character models Normally I'm like, uh, weird meeples, but it works in this one. Alright, housing block. Okay, basic controls. Should be pretty easy. Yeah. Okay, buildings in tilt. Any buildings must be connected to the town center via pass. These walkable platforms must... Also act, also act as sturdy connections between buildings. Housing blocks clump together in 2x2 two two squares, but that clump must also have some connection to a path. Later constructions may have similar clumping properties. When placing buildings, pay careful attention to tilt, as adding too much weight to one side or another will tip your kingdom, which may annoy your population and slow you down. But here's the real question. Can we go sideways? How do I like the art style? It's... It's pleasant. There we go. Okay. So we do have to worry about food and water. So I, I can't just uh, go pell-mell. 
Yeah, I'm I'm curious what would happen if I had too much tilts. Well, I do kind of wish there was a bit of a grid mode. But alas. Okay, can I see I'm going to have to just eyeball this. I think it's that. I think that's about right. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'm sure this thing is going to get bad. Hard to grid up in the air. If there was a proper top-down, I'd be super good. But there's no proper top-down. We'll just have to measure based on buildings and guesstimate, and honestly, probably get rid of the grid. People in work. On the top bar, you see the amount of people that have joined you. On the top left is the number of people, and the right is the amount of housing blocks. Uh, oh. Number of housing blocks. Each person requires one housing block. Inhabitants with no special specialty or specially assigned task will build any available construction. If there's no available construction and they're not assigned work, they'll show in the idle counts. Okay, so we gotta build a bunch of housing blocks. Because these people have nothing better to do. Oh, cost is too high. Gathering resources. You may, up, you may be up in the skies, but you still need to gather resources from the ground. Your people can reach these resources with a hangar building. Hangars contain planes, which allow people to fly to the ground and grab materials. Hangars should be one of the first buildings you construct. Let's pause for a second. Please tell me I can make a hangar. Yes. Cool. R to rotate. Eh, okay, that's weird. I really want to connect it to that, but I guess... I guess it has to connect to the... Well, alright, there we go. Yep. Long live the grid. The grid is dead. Okay, so I'm just going to let that go. So we need some resources. We barely have any houses. What else can I do? Storage. Pretty much nothing. We are, we are too poor to do anything. Yeah, this really does remind me of Flotsam. In, honestly, like a very good way. Let's see. Alright. Pause. Lock on camera. Customize motifs. Seven aircrafts used by workers to gather resources to interact with people in the world below. Forest 30 remaining. Okay, assign workers to collect from this forest. Alright, let's send them down. Can I move the city? It doesn't look like I can move normally. The Tapestry Rune. An unremarkable rune is half covered in sand, similar to the hundred scattered around the barrens. And yet within its walls we find the prophecy that we can hope that we hope can change the fate of an empire. For the beginning of this legend, the tapestry rune was unmarked and unknown. Yet, through the course of our story, it would become the genesis of our myth. Uh, of myth. From Journals of Our Travels by Muluab, the second chronicler. Okay, town center. Heart of a flying kingdom. Stores whatever that is as fuel. For the large fan, which is connected to all uh, connected to all lift buildings that also need power. If that ever depletes, our house will fall to the ground. Just always be wary of our reserves. Provides 40 lift per half... Okay, it's coal. Okay, movement. Unlike other kingdoms, your kingdom can move. Simply right-click anywhere on the land, and you'll start moving in that direction. Being unmoored has its advantages. You can get closer to resources that would otherwise be too far away. There we go! But yeah, so we do have to worry about fuel, which is a little spooky. Uh, if you've ever seen any of my, like, Flotsam series, there have absolutely been points where uh, I just ran out of juice. And died. Oh, not just Flotson. A, a lot of town builders run this issue. Okay, still no tilt issues. Oh, cost is too high. We need more wood. Well, supposedly we'll get a whole bunch while we're here.
This is cute. There's no way that this would ever actually function, but it's cute. Researching new buildings. Construction on a flying platform is hard. Beyond basic, basic and storage buildings, you must research any new constructions at an academy so they may work in the skies. Your people don't have many ideas for buildings yet, but an adobe kiln would be a useful addition so that you can transform bucket into brick. Create an academy, start researching the kiln. Fair enough. I still wanted to get these people enough houses so we don't have just homeless schmucks. You know, living out on the not streets. Okay. Basics. Resource, wonders, storage. Research tree, no academy. Okay, there's the academy. Requires 30 wood. Okay, so let's go over there and start grabbing stuff. This is cool. Music is really solid, too. So what is this thing? Because I see these balloons. I wonder... Oh, I wonder if that just popped up because I told them to gather things. Probably the case. Is that coal deposit? Yes. And also an oasis. We'll start with the wood so I can get the academy down, and we'll start looking into the other things. Okay. Build housing block. I'm gonna get these last two here, at the very least. Okay, so we've got that set up. Now we've got enough wood. Oh, but I need some more builders. I guess we'll wait until we're done with all the wood. Okay, start getting the water and build the academy. There we go. Oh, we have a big map looking thing. Okay. Renew the Airborne Kingdom. Prophecy scrawled in the tapestry is clear. We can only achieve prosperity by remaking the Airborne Kingdom. We must have a great council with as many members as the ancients did, and we must find an ally with all the kingdom oh, find an ally with all the kingdoms throughout the lands. Only by proving our worth will they agree to an allegiance. So we gotta have 150 population and twelve allies. Alright, so now we've got the research tree. Alright, let's pause for a second and take a look. Increase maximum possible speed. Coal storage by 100%. Regain more buildings when moving or destroying... Or, more resources when moving or destroying buildings. Extra speed, extra storage. Requiring less food per household might not be a bad idea. Housing blocks stack up to two stories. Three stories, so we can have multi-deckers. Extra available planes. Extra resource gather rate. Let's start with the uh, reduced food. I'm currently not making any food, and that's a bit of an issue. What else we got? Oh, we wanted the adobe kiln. Yeah, let's get that done real quick. Okay, how do I see research prog progress? Okay, and we have no idle people. How many people are working? Oh! Yeah, we've got five full people just working in the academy. So that's going to limit the amount of resources we got here. Oh, there's the research, research progress bar. Oh, am I dingus and didn't actually switch my title around? That's probably the case. Let me fix that. While we wait. Because, I mean, we're playing the waiting game. I don't want to go too fast. 
yet. There we go. Okay. So we're actually capped out on water for a bit. Let me see if I can build a uh, storage water tower. I feel like I should make a separate storage area. Okay, how much are paths? Oh, paths require, like, nothing. Okay, let's take those off. Seeing as we're capped out for a bit. Let's actually have them build some things. Yeah, are there speed buttons? Yes! Okay, no, that's the map. We want to do storage, water tower. I'm going to do a path behind that at the very least. Let's see, what else can we get? I guess I'm out of wood. Okay, Dobie Kiln Research transforms... Whatever that bucket is into bricks. Alright, let's take a look at the research tree for a moment. What else we got? Increased storage by 25%. Hmm. Water towers stack up to two stories. Stacking gives the same amount of storage, but costs fewer resources to build and no extra footprint. Makes sense. So these just stack. Okay. Increase efficiency. Lift, no. Propulsion, no. Desires, these look like I have to wait on them. Let's go back to the uh, require less food per household. Okay, what is our water cap? Pretty good. Let's cap out. Actually, let's um let's send two over to the coal. Get them started on that. Move over to the uh to between them just conserve time. Okay, building placement. The people do not enjoy living next to certain buildings. Like the one you just finished researching. They're indicated with a red radius when you're placing them. Pay careful attention to when placing these buildings so they're far away from any housing. You can also move any buildings by selecting the building and clicking the move icon. Okay. And speed. With each building you construct, drag is added to your kingdom, which slows down your movement speed. To get your speed back up, you must create propulsion buildings. You're continu continually using resources like cold, coal, food, and water. The faster you travel, uh, let's see, the less time it takes to get places and the fewer resources you, you'll you use along the way. Build enough propulsion to get close to your max speed or upgrade the town center to go even faster. So my max speed seems to be about 49%. Okay. So we're, we are going to need a new lift building sooner than later. But I have zero lift buildings researched. Nor do I see any lift buildings researchable. What? Maybe we gotta get brick first before I can actually even discover how to make a proper lift building. Well, in that case... I'm gonna need some wood. Well, let's just hope we don't run out of food while we're here. Uh, let's see. How much wood do I need? Fifteen. I have four. 
I guess we'll just hang out here for a little while yet. Okay, and let's go up to faster. Can I control the speed? Yes. One, two, and three. Panel bullet hover. Hovering your mouse along the top bar will show you information panels with more insights into your kingdom. Some of these panels contain bulleted lists which you can hover and click as a shortcut. Your inhabitants dropdown, for example, contains a list of all your workers' current tasks. Highlighting a bullet will replace their workplaces, and clicking a bullet selects that workplace. Okay. I need to upgrade your main building. Uh... can do that yet. It says next kingdom title at 16 more workers. Maybe. Okay, let's take them off coal. Let's grab the wood. Yeah, my... My assumption is... I probably have to get the research, resource first. The adobe. Uh, that's empty. Force is empty. It's almost empty. Okay, forces capped out. There's our resources. So what is this? Small settlement. We approach a hovel at the edge of nowhere. Some settlers may wish to join us to leave the land's toil behind. Settlers by necessity are hard and tireless. Or call to our own home, just abandoned. The people here would have to uproot their lives soon, like we did. From the memories of the distant past by Mulaub, Mulaub the Second Chronicler. We look for migrants, recruit. A few of the settlers seem intrigued by our vision, but they want assurances that they're leaving for a happier home. The sun-caked faces were as hard as leather. Most workers ignored our presence and continued their thankless tasks. From the Tales of Old Settlers by Mulab, the Second Chronicler. Well, we've got Ponkar, Votar, and Lana Chom. Lana Chom! Okay, let's get these three. That should be good enough. We're going to need more houses. But we return to our home all the same. Okay, what is that? Thicket. Gets food. I'm probably going to park right in the middle here. Because we can get clay, thicket, stuff, and... I thought I saw something else. No, I guess I didn't. Alright. Yeah, we'll just hang out next next to both of those. I can no longer... Okay, there we go. I just had to not have my settlement selected. Okay. There we go. So that way we'll be getting a bunch of... bunch of resources. Nope. Stop moving. I, I don't... I don't want to select you anymore. Okay, that should give me sufficient housing. And seeing as we've got some wood com coming in, we should be okay. Hey, less food per household. Let's wait on the research tree for a second. So I want to get resource adobe kiln. I kind of wish I could schedule this thing being built, uh, even though we don't have the resources for it. Oh. Well, that's considerably less of an issue than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Yeah, workers don't like being near this thing. I'm probably going to keep the housing block on one side. Oh, the big number is how many resources it still has. Oh, that's... 
That's super clever, actually. I like that. Okay, let's check storage. So we got food storage warehouse. Nothing more. Let's get a food silo here. Just so I can carry more food. Okay, recruiting more people. For your kingdom to thrive, you must always look for people to join. Potential migrants can be found in small settlements. They look at the happiness of your current inhabitants to judge whether they'd like to join. You can see the average satisfaction level on the top bar. Alright, cool. Yeah, we are pretty jubilant. And lift. Okay. Storage. Okay, food silo should be fine. But now we really have to look at lift. Research tree, lift. Um... Uh, okay, hold up. This is weird. I don't see anything about unlocking new techs. Maybe you need the mural? Oh, like we got to find another ruin. Well, I do have an unknown kingdom. Yeah. That seems reasonable-ish. Oh, here we go. Relic rune. Hunt for a relic. Relics are highly valued. Let's go grab that real quick. Okay, two relics found in nearby ruins. Maybe I'd be able to find... ...in one of these locations. We can check the city next. And see if that's got anything, because I don't I don't see any other major weird spots. We got a couple. We can make dyes over here. Fluorescent ponds. A number of small ponds glow with strange colors next to abandoned settlement. The walls of the buildings are dyed in a similar color to the waters. The source of the pigment is a mystery, but it appears we can change the colors of our own buildings with these new dyes. Materially, there are no benefit to swapping motifs on our kingdom. It's still Still, some might call it fun. From instructing to... Uh, instructing to literally. Okay. We take the dyes to customize our own buildings. I don't need workers. I can't fit them anyway. Okay, what else do I got? It looks like there's some interesting things over here. So let's... Let's actually just... Use this thing and start scooting around and see what we can get. So I don't, I don't need any more. Alright, research tree, pause. Let's increase our coal storage at the very least. What else we got over here? 
Because that's the tapestry room. Ruin. That's where we came from. What is this stuff? Quartz mine. Send a worker for that. And as many remaining quartz miners as we can for at least a little bit. I don't need much for quartz, but I might as well store it anyway. Let's see, off topic question What would be your favorite fictional world or country in an in game world from. Uh huh. That's a toughie. I don't actually rightfully know. Okay. So I'm thinking we swing here. Because I don't think there's too much. We've still got this cold patch. We've got a couple of cold patches. But I figure I might as well pick up as many relics as we can, then head over to the Kingdom of Rotula and see if we can learn how to increase lift. Because if I can't increase lift, we're effectively not dead in the water, but I can't expand. Okay. So we'll just load up on a some amount of wood. Okay, that'll have to do. At least until I get some extra lift, then we can look into other things. Luckily, resources seem to just regrow regularly. I don't actually... I'm assuming... Yeah, it looks like the coal deposit regrew, regrew as well. And so did the clay deposit. Yes! Kingdom of Rotula. To fulfill the prophecy, we must have Rotula allied with us. Our machines awe crowds and give an audience with the queen. We may also seek ancient blueprints that we can recombine with our own knowledge to make wondrous technology. Our main arrival to Rotula was more dire than we expected, for their kingdom was further in ruin than the rumors ever told. Excerpt from the first flutters. Got it. Uh, let's see. Search for technologies. Blueprints. We search for technologies. Uh, technologies. Okay, so here we go. Technologies in the depths below Rotula. We must pay them. Pay to have them excavated. And to work in the sky, we must research what we find further. But these would be a start. Rotulans, like many kingdoms we would come to learn, had forgone the knowledge of the ancients. But many a scavenger would risk their neck to unearth a wreckage for a study with the promise of a rare jewel. All right. I see. So I can purchase these for gems. Well, I've got some. Quests. They seek her assistance with an, for an important task. The queen tells the great conservatories in Rune. If only we could find the resources and lend some of her workforce to reconstruction. Completing such requests is the first step to gaining a kingdom's trust and eventually reconnecting them together to establish the prophecy once more. The queen in her retinue looked no more regal than her subjects, save for a tall golden leaf reaching high above her head. It was clear that our aid was meant to reestablish some grandeur to her stature. Okay. Two workers for an hour and some lumber and brick. We give the required materials and workers to reconstruct the Great Conservatory. We must wait nearby for its completion. Okay, barter our resources. I don't care about any of these, probably. I see. So that's the prices. I think I'll care about them more when I'm not surrounded by useful stuff. Uh, let's see. So while we're here... Oh. Let's just grab these two. There we go. Okay, what are my people working? Four using gli gliders, oasis, coal deposits... Quests. Uh, let's see, and the next are academies and kilns. The problem is the kilns being full. Lock on camera, move, customize. I don't want to. Okay, it's complete. 
With our resources and labor, the conservatory is again whole. Upon seeing our efforts, a couple of locals join our cause, agreeing to take part in our great council. But the great conservati conservatory is still withered. Its grove rotted, and the queen asks us to find a sapling from the golden trees of Kaldar to replant their once beautiful gardens. The exact whereabouts of these trees is unknown, but the rumored location is marked on your map. We then understood the queen's need for the conservatory, for its magnificent grove it was a symbol of unity, and the Rutulans would stand with any queen who returned it to its glory. Okay. So let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at the map. So we are here. It wants me to go here. This map is a bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. But now we can actually see stuff. So there's three more people potentially at the settlement, or that's three more... I have no idea if that's three more people at that settlement. Okay. It looks like I'm pointing in the right direction, so I'm just going to go out here. Let's end those. Okay, while well, we're at it, build housing block. Where are we going? I'm going the wrong way. The problem with movement and moving the map or oh wrong place we want to go over here okay so i got to get i got to get lift but we can't do anything about that yet how am i doing on resources we're doing amazingly well I was just afraid for a little bit there that the game had bugged out and didn't have the tech available. But I'm glad that was wrong. Yeah, as far as fictional worlds that I'd like to... I like? I don't know. The problem is most fictional worlds suck. They're just filled with sad, depressed people all the time. And it is... It's a little hard for me to get excited about most fantasy or sci-fi worlds because everybody that always writes them is kind of grimdark. Oddly enough, I think if if I were ever to choose like a, a fantasy or sci-fi world that I'd want to live in, uh, Pokemon potentially. Okay, I don't want migrants yet. Might want to get another academy once we have more people. Eternal Forge. Oh. A large forge glows hot with colored sparks. Though the nearby settlement has been long abandoned, the metalwork is a similar color to the sparks emanating from the forge. The exact alloy is a mystery, but it appears we can change the colors of our own metals with these new dyes. Hell yeah. Okay, I got four idle. So let's cap out on food and wood for a moment. Seeing as I have a bunch, and we're barely utilizing any of my coal. Pokemon hides a dark, dark history from what I've heard from those that go a bit too deeply into things. True, but they've got just that level of, like, kind of convenient modern tech, and life seems so... easy. Outside of a couple of things. Okay, building motifs, we know about that. Kingdoms and allegiances. So to re recreate the legendary airborne kingdom, you must ally with all 12 kingdoms. So effectively give them stuff, do their quests. Perhaps allying will get you something in return. To completely rebuild that glorious airborne kingdom, also have a population of 150 people. Alright. Easy enough. Okay, we're almost done with the research tree, so I can stack more coal. Now lift. Wing! Okay, average cost, no fuel, two workers. Good to know. So it doesn't require fuel necessarily to get the wing. And I can increase the... ...overall capacity. 
Right, food storage is full, so let's just take them off of that. What are we doing on the wood? Eh, it's almost done. Let's see, what about Dragon Quest? Way too unstable of a society. I mean, think of it this way. In Dragon Quest, you have people that are... Uh, let's see. Let's just go all in on this one. Okay, so we've got the wing. Let's get the propeller. And go from there. Ideally, I'd like to keep my fuel costs relatively low. Uh, let's see. But no, like, with the Dragon Quest universe, the Demon Lord, 90% of the time, like, he straight up wins. And then the heroes have to kind of, like, claw their, their society back from the brink. And so it seems so, like, bright and cheerful and stuff. But there's, there's enough bad stuff that happens in those games specifically that I don't, I don't trust it. All right. Well, I think this is actually a fairly good stopping point, at least for now. Obviously, I'm getting a little off topic, but that's fine. So this this game is really neat. It reminds me a lot of Frostpunk, but I'm not depressed playing it, which is huge for me. I love the idea of weird speculative technologies that absolutely do not exist, and there's kind of just a whimsy to these giant wings. <laughs> Oh, man. It's just kind of a whimsy of having a giant floating city that's flying around gathering resources and doing quests for beleaguered cities that, you know, somehow can't solve their own problems. I do find this game a little simple. I've actually played about four hours of it so far. And I would say I'm, I'm vaguely at the halfway point content-wise in terms of, like, getting all the quests done. Uh, but I'm a little bit further along in terms of getting my city built. Uh, more at the two-thirds mark. And the next set is going to get a lot faster. There's definitely a lot of, like, cool things that you can get later on, like wonders and some fairly useful tech. By the end of it, my <laughs> my city really does look like quite the metropolis, which is rad. I love watching this thing wobble around. Uh, but it's definitely not going to be as deep as maybe, like, RimWorld if you're really looking for something like that. But at the same time, this... This is exactly the kind of game I think I needed this year. Uh, I, I've said that a lot this year, but just really peaceful games that I can just zen out and have a good time with without really thinking too hard or really caring too much. And I got to say, even from like a, a more, I don't want to say niche perspective, but as far as like unique selling points go, I love this art style, the kind of weird, more map style map. You know, it's not very realistic. This is the kind of thing that you would see almost on a, on a board. You could even see the parchment earlier. Uh, so that's exactly what it is. And I love that aesthetic. And I would love to see more people use this kind of style instead of like a Skyrim style, really high def map that you don't actually need. Or is that the mods that made it really high def? I don't remember. Either way, I love this mapping system. And that alone made this game kind of really stand out in my head. And it was part of the reason why I was looking forward to this so much. So, I guess uh, nuts and bolts before I go. Uh, the game will be coming out uh, today, uh, officially, on the Epic Game Store. Uh, exclusively. I have no idea if it will be coming to other platforms at any point. Uh, but it will be $25. Which I think is a decent price for this. Uh, once again, it really does remind me of Frostpunk. And I believe Frostpunk was at about the same price point, so I use that as a kind of easy reference point for judging this game. But like I said, it didn't make me sad, which I think is huge. It takes away a little bit on the narrative side, because this very much is kind of the, like, I, it is a bit sunshine and rainbows plot-wise. But I mean, for 2020, that's exactly the kind of plot I want. <laughs> Uh, but if you do decide to pick it up, make sure you use the creator code or creator tag, Wanderbot, when you do so. I uh, get a small cut of the sale, and that is very appreciated as it keeps this channel running uh, for as long as I can get it going. And hopefully, that'll be a very long time to come. So, uh, speaking of long time to come, this is going to be a full series. I've already, like I said, recorded four hours of this. It's just very zen, and it's honestly going to be one of the last new games to come out this year. Uh, which is a little bit of a weird time for, I think, a lot of people. 
but for me, it's kind of perfect. Most other games have gotten out of the way, and I can just kind of zen out with this one. And then we can go back and start taking a look at some of the other games that I need to finish or, you know, just totally miss this year. So, anyway, uh, if you guys like this episode in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. Helps more than you know. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe. Because, yeah, I've got, I've got almost the whole thing filmed already. And I can't wait to sit down and film the rest. So, with all that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.